The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. On the way back from Arizona this week, where we visited my mother and Peg's father, I ordered some fast food at a drive-in window, and the clerk asked, you want to supersize that? For 30 cents more, I could get a whole lot more of the garbage I was ordering just to save time on the road. Are you crazy? I wanted to ask. Last Sunday morning, the Episcopal Church celebrated the installation of our new presiding bishop, Michael Curry. The expectation of any installation is always the expectation of something new. What is new about our presiding bishop is that he is crazy. And according to him, so ought we all to be, crazy Christians. He said this in his sermon, We have a day to remember, crazy Christians. It's not called all the same day. It's called all the saints day. Because though they were fallible and mortal and sinners like the rest of us, when push came to shove, the people we honor as saints marched to the beat of a different drummer. In their lifetimes, they made a difference for the kingdom of God. We might call the book of their stories the Chronicles of Crazy Christians. My four-year-old granddaughter says to me quite frequently, you are a crazy grandpa, and I am delighted to hear it. Of course, presiding Bishop Curry is encouraging us to be crazy about Jesus. Like anyone might be said to be crazy about what means the most to them. It is crazy to follow one who teaches us to take crazy risks. His gospel today makes it clear that giving and serving in any capacity is sacrifice, not surplus generosity. Clearly, according to today's widow's might story, Jesus' measurement is not how much we put in the offering plate, but how much we have left for ourselves. It is not the gift of our abundance, but the much greater abundance that we still have left for ourselves, that is, according to Jesus, the problem. The widows of our first reading and of our gospel gave all they had. Crazy. The poor whom, we, whom I have served for most of my 40 years as a priest, the poor of El Monte, of the Altiplano of Peru, of the outskirts of Mexico City, the immigrant populations of Mesa and Flagstaff, Arizona, these poor have taught me a basic truth, one that the very poor know well. The widow's two coins weren't going to change her life. She could give her all to the temple treasury because with the coins or without them, she was still a dependent person. Even with her two coins, she couldn't eat, couldn't live, couldn't survive. Total dependence was her reality. And Jesus observed, Look, that crazy woman supersized her gift. To people like me, if not really wealthy, still wealthy enough to be independent, this sounds truly crazy. My money gives me independence and freedom from living like a poor widow. I like it that way, and my family likes it that way, so I will not be putting my entire paycheck in the offering plate this morning. As any of us rises on the economic ladder, giving is a problem. Statistically and universally, the proportion of giving goes down, not up, when people acquire more wealth. It goes down significantly, not up when people acquire more. They have more to protect. When you're as low as the widow on the economic scale, high stakes giving, speaking of percentages, not or rather tithing, high stakes giving on a percentage scale is no problem. The widow was totally dependent 
And that's what Jesus pulls out of her story like a pearl of great price. American culture counsels us to become like the honored scribes whose pocketbooks are the prime source of their security. But Jesus counsels us to become like the crazy widow. We are to model our lives on one who would normally, we would normally overlook. Being as busy as we are, admiring the stuff we acquire, just as I did this past Friday, as Peg and I signed mortgage papers on a small mountain home to which we hope one day to retire. And then I sat down to write the sermon. And there stood the widow. The widow that Jesus pointed to as my spiritual mentor. There she was, standing on the margins of all I hold dear. Her way is a life of faith, grounded in the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. It's a life lived in the conviction that she and all of us are only stewards of all we have in our hands and in our lives, not the owners of these. I am grateful that I at least recognize this simple fact. I am the work of God's hands. I rest and work in those hands, and I shall die in those hands. And at the moment of my death, whatever is left in my hands will be of no use whatsoever. At that moment, would I not be better to be like the widow, with nothing in my hands? I give thanks for the widow's great witness. Someday, someday, may I be as free to be so generous. I am furthermore grateful that I was baptized into the faith of my fathers and mothers from England and Ireland, France, Germany, Italy, and Switzerland. And I'm proud of the hodgepodge that represents as well. This faith is at its, at its core teaches me to be so grateful. And today it calls me to supersize my gratitude. And I am also grateful that we have these young children to welcome into the family of God this day, Madison and Melina, Kathleen and Martin. I am grateful for this baptism ceremony because you see it is baptism that makes sense of the widow's might, that makes sense of the widow of Zarephath's empty jar and jug. Baptism speaks to mortal life, perhaps even more than what it says about eternal life. It teaches us that life is about letting go and about serving. Even when we are not totally sure why or what we serve, as was the case for so many veterans whom we remember this week, but serving nonetheless. Baptism makes sense of the widow's might because new life trumps old life. As the widow's dependence upon God trumps the pride and self-reliance of the Pharisees, of me, of all of us who have had much more to give but have kept way much more than we ever gave. You see, I may not be ready for the widow's generosity, but I am grateful to begin to understand. It's crazy to do what the widow did. Only real, real dependence upon a higher power than self makes sense of it. It's risky to do what our veterans of all the ages have done. Only real focus upon a higher value than self makes sense of that. May we who are baptized, and we who have the example of the widows today, and we who celebrate the land of the free on Veterans Day weekend, may we be this day truly grateful. And may we one day one day hence, may we be truly generous, crazy Christians. May we approach the widow's generosity before the day comes when we roll up to the drive-in window at the pearly gates where an angel will ask about the gift of our life. Do you want to supersize that? Are you crazy? 
The jar of meal was not emptied, nor did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord. Amen.